Hi guys, so um, I wanted to share this exciting experience with you. Uh, so I finally got my electric car charger, uh, the the level two or the it's EVSE electric vehicle um, supply equipment, but uh, people just call it a charger and that's fine. But I was going to get either a Clipper Creek um, 32 amp or this juice box 40 amp and I decided to go with the juice box just because the shipping was faster and it's about a hundred dollars cheaper uh, so I just kinda wanted to share with you as I unbox this I never opened one of these up so um, I'll be excited as excited as you so let me uh, go ahead and uh, cut everything open and, uh, let's see what's inside Okay, that's, that's interesting. I didn't realize they would have this, but um, this is a uh, card that you can put on your vehicle to uh, let people know that it's okay to unplug because you, you're just opportunity charging or um, do not unplug because you know you need the charge um, and then you can write in on here when it's okay to uh, unplug. That's pretty cool. Alright, this stuff looks mostly like a mounting bracket in the box. You got the installation guide and mounting template. So, uh, this is something that you'd probably use on the studs or whatever to, to set where your mounting bracket's gonna go. So, you, you know, you just mark through there, um, and that's where you, where you drill out the, the mounting holes. And that's the mounting plate. I'm not going to take it out of the cardboard, but it's it's in there. Um, you just see how how this would mount. The screws are here, um, and then of course this I believe would be screwed onto the back, and you would just slide this in and out of the plate. Um, so let me just go ahead and move this out of the way. Um, and also here's a quick start guide. Eh. Thank you very much. Well, you're welcome. Oh, by the way, the other thing about the juice box, both the juice box and the um, Clipper Creek, they're both made in America, so that's one of the reasons. Um, now, I got just the basic 40. I didn't need the Pro or the Pro the Pro 75. Um, actually, I don't know that much about it. I'm guessing that's a 75 amp. This is a 40 amp. Um, one thing about the Bolt EV is it only charges at 32 amps, um, but it's not a big deal. It's still most of what you'll see in uh, most of the current that you'll see coming out of this. Uh, and it also kind of makes this so if I get another car later on that can charge at 40 amps, uh, it's a little bit more useful. So uh, I don't know if I want to go into this quick start guide too much. Um, I'm guessing it's pretty straightforward just about how to hook up the template um, and then of course there's the Wi-Fi uh, setup instructions. That's that's one of the things that the Pro has that this one doesn't. Um, I actually didn't want the Wi-Fi feature so I'm not really concerned about it either way. Um, it can be good for tracking like uh, power usage and things like that but that's not not really something that I would end up doing. Plus, where I'm going to be using this, most of the time I'm not going to actually have an active Wi-Fi internet connection. So, here's the unit itself. The cord is fairly heavy. Um, I'm going to leave it in the box, but um, the unit isn't too heavy. Uh, about what I'd probably expect. The shipping label said this box weighed um, 26 pounds and I believe it but um, most of that I think is actually in the cord weight um, but yeah as you can see on here the voltage it will accept 120 to 240 uh, 40 amp current uh, total power this is a 
10 kilowatt charger. Uh, so if you ever want to know exactly how much power is being output, you just times the amperage by the voltage and that should give you uh, basically what the kilowatts are. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this down and show you the ends of the cords. So the first is, this isn't actually a charger that you would put um, into, like hook it directly up to a panel. You actually would first create a socket, and this is a NEMA 1450 uh, socket. So you'd have to run the socket in the panel first, and then what you do is you plug this in, and that's where that wall mount comes in. Uh, you wall mount it near the plug, the socket, and you plug in and then you have power. Uh, now the reason I did this is I want this charger to be mobile. So for most of the time um, I won't be using this as a mounted charger at home. I'll actually be using it uh, for trips. And that's part of the reason you want to go with a NEMA 1450 is this is the standard uh, 240 volt uh, hookup that you'll see at RV camping spots. So it makes it kind of that universal um, plug that you can use if you're somewhere like out remote. Typically they'll still have power hookups for um, RVs and motorhomes and things like that and that's why you want this hookup. Also because it's a, a 240 volt at 40 amp, it means that the Bolt um, EV would be able to charge at one of those RV camping spot chargers uh, in about 8 hours. So from empty to full in about 8 hours. Um, which obviously isn't as fast as like the DC fast charging, but it's still about the best you're going to do otherwise. Okay, so the wrapping is off. This is a standard um, J1772 socket. This is the uh, this is the basic AC socket that you're going to see at a lot of the public charging stations. Notice again, it's not the DC um, fast charging, where it it will actually have the two um, ports below it. This is just the top portion. Um, but again, this is what this is almost a universal. So many of the um, electric vehicles can use this. Basically, basically everything other than Teslas that are being sold right now will use this socket. Tesla still uses it, but it requires an adapter. Um, so this is more the uh, universal um, SAE uh, standard for um, for the uh, charging. And uh, yeah, it's actually. The feel of it, it's, this is a very solid connector. A lot of times this button will be kind of uh, like frail is the best word I can think of. It does have a, a little locking mechanism. I don't know if you can see the hole right there that will allow you to lock this so that someone can't open it and pull the plug out. So that's a nice feature. Um, and all, all around this is a pretty solid unit. The cord itself again is also very thick, very solid. I would say this is probably where a majority of the weight in this charger comes from. Uh, you know the the different, yeah it's a, a 10 gauge um, cord so this will allow you to you know plug in the charger at wherever the socket is and then run your cord as necessary. So I'm pretty impressed with the unit, just the, the look and feel of it. Um, hopefully I'll be able to test it out a little bit more. Um, I don't know that it's as uh, rugged as say like the uh, Clipper Creek would be, but um, it's a pretty solid unit and it's, it's something worth keeping with you in your car if you're gonna go on long trips where maybe the only charging that's gonna be available is something like uh, uh, an RV park or something of that nature. Um, and just as a contrast 
for those of you who haven't seen, this is actually the stock adapter that comes with the Bolt EV. So it this is designed to run off of just your standard wall socket, it's just a 110, 120 volt um, AC. Again, notice it's got the same uh, J1772 universal adapter, uh, but this is also what I was talking about. The, the Juice Pro has a very solid button where this is, I mean, a, a little less solid. This is still actually pretty good, um, but it's, it's all plastic. Uh, and, uh, but everything about this is a much, much lighter unit. Um, and this, I would say, should be used basically as an emergency unit. Some people might use this at home if they only charge or say they only drive 50 to 60 miles a day this will recharge everything that you've used um, in a night but if you go from empty this will take over two days to to recharge the Bolt EV um, now in the Bolt EV it has a setting that this it only applies to the 120 volt hookup but uh, you can choose 8 amps or 12 amps in case your circuit is a uh, you know a lower lower grade and uh, but even on the 12 amp it will take like I said about about 60 hours I think to, to recharge fully it's a very long time uh, whereas the the juice box down there it will take like I said about eight uh, one thing though to keep in mind is this is might also still be worth it to keep in your car like I said for absolute emergencies because 110 volt can be found everywhere. Um, the the NEMA 1450, you know, sometimes uh, RV parks they can be, uh, you know, they can be booked up or they might not be available or the switch might not be working. So I mean, if you get to the point where it's an absolute emergency, you might just need to bite the bullet and you know hook this up and you know head out for a vision quest or something and come back a few days later and leave but uh, <laughs> that's not going to be ideal but it's better than getting completely stranded so I'd still recommend keeping this around uh, one other option too is there are people that there are adapters that you can get that will actually hook this up to 220 so this unit will work with a, uh, a 220 hookup but it's still going to be limited uh, to that 12 amps even on 220 I believe the uh, um, the limitation is uh, it's about 4 kilowatts which I mean you can just do the math um, on the Bolt EV that would still take you know 15 16 hours to to recharge um, maybe more than that maybe it's maybe it's almost 20 hours with this unit if you're running it off of 220 still better than like uh, the the 120 but you still need the adapter to do that but anyway so I figured I would do this quick little rundown um, I haven't had a chance yet to to test this out clearly I just opened this uh, I'll be putting the mounting bracket and everything up uh, on my property up in Northern California but for the time being I'll probably keep this unit with me um, and then uh, look for some opportunities to test it out and then I'll, I'll share that with you guys when I do. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about this. There are some other really experienced users with Juice Boxes as well. Some of them have the Juice Box Pro um, which you, know, you can also look at the Wi-Fi features if that's something that would interest you. Alright guys, thank you.